Hello and welcome to Inside Healthcare. Summer is here and doctors every summer see lots of preventable injuries related to boating and um, on our lakes. Dr. Brian Jones with Urgency Room is with us today to talk about these injuries and ways to prevent them. So I understand Minnesota has just passed a law saying that um, boats are now required to have carbon monoxide detectors on them and it's based on a new law called Sophia's Law. Can you tell us about that and, and why this came about? Uh, that's that's, that's correct. Uh, that's based on a case of a young girl, seven years old, who went into the cabin of their uh, family's uh, boat uh, to rest, and father went down less than 10 minutes later, and she was unconscious, and oh they were unable goodness. to revive her. And it was carbon monoxide poisoning. So this year, Minnesota passed a law saying that any boats that have uh, kitchens, galleys, and sleeping areas and toilets need to have a marine certified carbon monoxide detector, and any boats that have a uh, a private compartment underneath of any type need to have warning stickers on the boat that that's a possibility. And um, other things that people should know about carbon monoxide poisoning, and it's not something you can actually smell. No. I mean, it, you hear, you smell a lot of different smells when you're on a boat, but that's not one of them. Right. Carbon monoxide is colorless, odorless, so it's one of those things that, unless you're aware of it, it can sneak up on you. Um, and the the symptoms early on are fairly subtle. It's you get tired, you feel a little nauseous, you get a headache, and then you fall asleep. And, and you wouldn't you know. think anything of those type of symptoms right. either. So that's that's good to have that measurement. And this is the first in the in the country to require this. I believe that's correct. Yeah. This. Other things that people should know about carbon monoxide poisoning during going into the summer months here? Yeah, I, I mean, the, anytime you're in an enclosed space where there's an engine or a heater running, uh, you need to be aware that that's a possibility. So airing out those spaces, or if, you have your, if you're on a boat and people are going underneath to change or rest, then they shouldn't be down there when your engine's running and you're not moving. Yeah, as I mentioned before we started too, I had a friend that died of that, her and her husband and young child, mm -hmm. at a cabin up north, same kind of thing. Right. And, that's the first time I ever heard of really carbon monoxide poisoning mm -hmm. to that degree. So what are some of the other types of injuries that you might see related to boating? Roping, ropes I understand, or things like that? Yeah, it's, it's not uncommon for both uh, the uh, skiers and tubers or and the people on the boat when you're feeding out the rope, if, you don't, if you're not aware of where the rope is, if it's underwater, uh, hands can get caught and crushed. Uh, you can get yeah. uh, rope burns on the palms or on the wrists. And sometimes even the people out on the tubes or skis, if their rope is wrapped funny and the driver's not aware of it, can cause injuries as well. What about, you mentioned the, the jet skis and that very popular other type of injuries that you're seeing related yeah. to those? With jet skis, I think the biggest thing is that some they're, they can be very powerful and some people are not aware of that and so they get thrown off and so just like if you crash on your bike, uh, or on a motorcycle, the water is much harder going 50 miles an hour than it is when you're jumping off the dock. You know, and I can't believe how many people just won't wear a life jacket, and it seems like any time you're on the boat, you should have it. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it really is important to wear your life jacket, even if you're an excellent swimmer. The water conditions, many boats can make it very difficult to swim even a distance you'd be comfortable with in a, in a swimming pool. And also, we often put life jackets on our kids, but we don't wear them ourselves. But our first instinct, if your kids, something happens to them, is to jump in and, and try to save them. But you really can't do that if you put yourself in danger as well. Yeah, so sadly, we've heard a number of those cases here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Each summer, it seems like similar type of a thing where someone goes to rescue someone else and they end up perishing. Right. Yeah. So what would be some of those other things that you might see related to boating and, and even the dock too as well? Yeah. You know, one of the most common things we see at the urgency room is probably fishing lures getting stuck really? in various places. <laughs> yes. Um, in various and, places. Yeah. So we've seen them everywhere. Eyebrows, cheeks, fingers, hands, oh wrists. I saw one in the knee the other day. These usually happen from either someone casting or more commonly when you're taking the uh, hook out of the fish or baiting the hook. So, and if you have that and you can't get it out, you shouldn't try to force it out. If you come into the urgency room, we can provide some anesthesia, numb it up, and get it out safely. Wow, that's amazing that that's one of the most common injuries that you're seeing yeah. as well. So, and also we hear of bacteria in our lakes. What should people be concerned about yeah, that? Yeah, there's probably two main bacteria you need to worry about. Uh, and one is called Aramonis, and this is one that can get into wounds. So if you were to injure yourself in the water, cut yourself on the dock, and even more importantly, puncture wounds, it can cause a fairly serious skin infection. So any type of cut or uh, puncture in the, in the water should be thoroughly cleaned out. And if you have any concerns for infection, certainly come and see us because this really does need to be treated with antibiotics. And what would be some of the symptoms that you're seeing that it's getting more infected? Yeah, that'd be more redness or uh, uh, 
oozing from the wound or increasing pain okay. rather than, than getting better over time. And then the other bacteria that we worry about a little bit is Giardia, and that one is from drinking contaminated water. So. Uh, don't drink the lake water is what it comes down well, that's to. That's a tough <laughs> order, especially for the little ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but good advice. And what would be some of those other common type of injuries that you might see in the summer that are preventable? Yeah. Um, uh, when you're docking, you need to watch where hands and fingers are. It's not uncommon for us to see uh, fractures and lacerations from getting caught between two boats or with a boat in the dock. Um, and then uh, a lot of times with tubers, uh, people like to uh, get out there and push the limits a little bit. Uh, and the most common things we see are often sometimes fractures and concussions where the people are trying to get the person off the tube or you have two people on and they collide as they come off the tube. And, and those are not uncommon for us. Do you see lots of um, preventable injuries related to alcohol? Uh, unfortunately, a lot of these involve alcohol, just like when you're on land, uh, you, your judgment goes away a little bit and people make decisions that they wouldn't otherwise make, you don't pay attention to your surroundings as much, and so, yes. Um, any final advice for our viewers? So I think the most important thing is to just be safe, protect yourself from the sun. Sunburn's a common one. Uh, if you have any concerns about an injury, certainly come in and see us at the urgency room. You know, wear your life jacket, uh, watch your alcohol consumption. And urgency room, you have three different locations? We do have three cities. locations, one in Woodbury, one in Vadnais Heights, and uh, one in Egan. Well, Dr. Brian Jones, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, thanks for having Great me. Great advice. Thanks. Thank you. And we'll be back with more on Inside Healthcare right after this. The state of Minnesota is suing Purdue Pharma, a major opiate drug company. The Minnesota Attorney General Lori Swanson just filed a lawsuit accusing the major drug maker of illegal use of sales tactics. Locally, we've learned that there are efforts underway to fight chemical use in our schools with the help of chemical health specialists through the Youth Service Bureau. As you see in this video, it's helping to change lives. My name's Nate, I'm a senior at Stillwater. I used to be a drug user, and then um, I got caught by the police on January of 2017, and I got referred to the YSB for my community service. I didn't even know what the Youth Service Bureau was. I mean, at first I didn't really think it was gonna be I thought it was going to be stupid. I'd rather just, I'd rather pay the ticket. I'd probably still be using, honestly, because I didn't really want to stop using drugs after I got caught. You know, like, it's an addiction. You can't just stop. Like, it's harder than it actually seems. I didn't really care a lot last year. I felt like my life was just going downhill. One of our program areas is youth-focused family counseling. Another program area is youth and family education. Our third area is diversion services. And then our fourth area, which is what I do, is um, school-based chemical health support.
One of the awesome things about Youth Service Bureau too is that they get to come into schools and work with us in partnerships to provide services and interventions for families as well. I think it's, it's a great opportunity because whenever they're seeing those students in, in our setting, in our wellness center, they're able to kind of get to the root of what's going on and offer group sessions. Having the chemical health support has been great, um, just that we are able to have a partnership with YSB that we can collaborate on ways to address chemical health through early intervention and prevention. I have just really appreciated Youth Service Bureau coming alongside of us and providing resources for that as far as speakers and also directing us to places we can go to get resources. We've contracted with Youth Service Bureau for next school year to have a uh, mental health counselor come down one day a week and I'm real excited about that because so many students do have uh, depression, anxiety. Youth Service Bureau professionals that work within our wellness center and do considerable consulting. Seeing students, seeing families, um, helping support students and helping them find their way through obstacles. Without the Youth Service Bureau we wouldn't have emotional supports at hand for our kids and so the Youth Service Bureau helps me keep my kids in school. One of our biggest challenges this year though, which was a surprise to me, was the amount of anxiety that a lot of our incoming students faced. That's one area that actually YSB did help us. They came and did an anxiety group for our students and that was very beneficial. 75% of our kids are on free and reduced lunch. I think a lot of the challenges that our kids have with their home lives that uh, the Youth Service Bureau can provide some expertise. She's been working with a small group of kids who, uh, whose parents are incarcerated. She's worked with kids who um, have themselves struggled with some chemicals. and I mean, just other things that are more preventative. Um, she did an anger management group this, this fall with some of our um, you know, tough kids. Which I was just shocked that that many students acknowledged that they had questions and concerns about drugs and alcohol. I actually feel like that was really courageous of that many middle school students to say, yep, that is something that I want to have more education on. If you waited until high school, you'd be missing out. Now is the time to intervene with these kids. I am the SRO, or School Resource Officer, here at Stillwater High School. I know a kid that's struggling, but obviously we don't have a crime at this point, but there's, I can see they're still struggling if there's mental health, if there's chemical use, use with these kids. I always say, do you know who Julia is? I always say or the Youth Service Bureau and the Wellness Center. We want you obviously on the good path and they have tools here to help and I just send them down their way. The best part um, of working with students is when a kid can look in the mirror and like the person looking back at them. This year um, I'm doing a lot better in school and my grades have turned around a lot. I feel like I'm more respectful to teachers too. helps turn your life around too, you know, like, I'm like really glad that I got sent there. Chris Domine is a husband, father, Athlete, because a kidney transplant gave him a second chance at life, made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as a donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Joining us now is Vince Murphy, Pharmacy Clinical Services Manager with Walmart Pharmacies. So glad to have you with us. Good to be here. So um, you have a health and wellness um, focus and at the pharmacies at Walmart. Can you tell us what, what do you offer? What's that all about? Yeah, so at Walmart we really pride ourselves on being a full service pharmacy. Uh, nationwide we have 4,600 stores and clubs, uh, about 18,000 pharmacists strong, which we think are the best pharmacists in the industry. Uh, we provide uh, obviously dispensing services, we include immunization services, 
basic screenings, point of care testing, specialty medications, which is an evolving field for us, and MTM or adherence support services, medication therapy management, and how we can help patients stay adherent to their medications, find cost savings. Uh, as you know, Walmart's really famous for their $4 list um, and has been a low price leader in bringing down the cost of healthcare in America. And we want to stay at the forefront and in, in continuing making the right investments within healthcare and within our pharmacies uh, to better serve our patients, increase access, and, and really deliver on quality patient outcomes in the pharmacy. Yeah, I was going to ask why, why you offer all of this. I mean, it's, it's not actually, it's evolved as far as the pharmacy business. Definitely, well. yeah. So if you look at Walmart's network, uh, like I said, of 4,600 stores within the U.S., uh, we have, uh, or patients, that live, uh, there's um, basically 90% of Americans live within 10 miles of a Walmart pharmacy. Do they really? And so in, in every day we have over 50 million Americans walking through our doors. And so uh, we like to think ourselves as the, the doorway to healthcare in America. And if you can provide these services in a comprehensive and low cost manner, uh, it helps every, every patient be more aware of their, of their health and we can be that conduit as pharmacists, we're the most accessible healthcare professional. And so we can help direct patients to the care that they need or provide the services right in store, such as immunizations. If somebody needed their immunization, it can help uh, cut down a trip out. Right, and, you, and you've done some national screening days. You had one in the month of June. You've got one coming up in, in the month of July here. Correct. So tell us about what's involved with the health screening. So we're really excited about our Walmart wellness days is what we call them. Uh, we provide free basic screenings and low cost immunizations to patients in the community that want to come in and, and get a free screening to identify things like elevated blood sugars, increased BMI, and high blood pressure. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to get in to see your doctor or maybe you're in between doctor's visits. Uh, medications change all the time mm -hmm. with the dose and it's a great way to get a snapshot in time. So whether you've been diagnosed with diabetes or high blood pressure, uh, seeing where you're at in this day and time, or if you haven't been to the doctor in a while and need that jump start or that motivation uh, to maybe go see your healthcare professional. Uh, on Saturday, July 21st from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at all of our stores, both here locally in the Twin Cities and Do nationwide. Do you need an appointment? Mm -hmm. No appointment needed. And so that's the nice thing. It's a walk-in basis. Uh, we'll even have at several of our stores, our vision centers uh, up and they'll be doing vision screenings as well. And so. It's really a nice health fair environment where you can uh, sit down. Our pharmacists will be doing screenings here in the Twin Cities metro area so you can meet that pharmacist that's going to be handling your medications and ask the questions and you'll have that time just like we have right now to, to ask those important questions that have uh, that you want to ask to a pharmacist that uh, you may not get the time um, in your routine day or anything like that. And I know like when you go to your, your physician for a physical, you, sometimes you often have to fast and things, but you don't have to for these screenings? Correct, so at the end of the appointment, uh, we <coughs> send every patient home with a healthy ranges form. And on that, it indicates whether the patient was fasting or not. And so depending on what your readings come out to be, um, we can have that discussion to kind of evaluate and, and interpret interpret those results and say, well, this is uh, for a patient who was not fasting, this could be a normal reading or vice versa that will have those ranges so it gives a good frame and mindset for what your readings mean when we give you that healthy ranges form that you can then take back to your doctor or your pharmacist or pharmacy um, to have those uh, additional discussions. And, and did I read that you've had over a million individuals or some uh, even a bigger number that have gone through this screening already? Yeah, it's actually double wow, that. So amazing. over the past couple of years, over 2.2 million screenings have been performed in our Walmart Wellness Days. And that's really exciting because those are patients, you know, and we've had stories on Wellness Day where patients have had uh, elevated blood pressure and we've our pharmacists have been able to get that individual connected to care in a timely urgent manner um, and it, it saved lives in some instances oh, and so it's yeah, that's sure. the importance and uh, the gravity of what what we're trying to do with our wellness days. And what kind of a, a, a turnout or um, have you seen here in Minnesota or in, in Wisconsin neighboring state here? Yeah it's it's definitely on the docket every every about 90 days we like to have these wellness events so there's that good follow-up. Uh, patients are excited so a lot of people kind of wonder what's going on and you know is it really free and it is free there's there's no copay there's no cost uh, we want patients to be aware of their medications and and what their numbers really mean 
And, and you're, you were going to show us um, how simple it is to do one of these screenings. Yeah. Exactly. So if, if you're uh, willing to volunteer for Absolutely, me right now, yeah. it's very quick and easy. Um, we use a professional glucometer and have uh, our CLIA certificates for our pharmacists can, can do these results. So um, let's yeah, do a quick test. Yeah, if you want to go ahead, yeah. All right. So. All right. And how long does this typically take then? Probably waiting in line would be the longest part. Exactly. That's your longest thing. We do have everyone, all patients fill out a consent form um, just because we want to make sure that we're screening, making sure there's no reason not to get any testing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that will kind of be your first first step. Um, you can even right now stop by your pharmacy and, and get one of the consent forms that we can actually um, get you prepared. So when you in do come in the day. In advance of the screening. Exactly. And again, that you said is July 21st? July 21st from 10 to 2 p.m. at all of our stores here. So we just need to quick sterilize your area. Okay, and what do you... All right, pick a finger. finger. It's just a poke, right? Just a simple finger stick, just a little droplet of blood is all that we need. Oops. Didn't even flinch. <laughs> Been covering health and medical for a long time, so. All right, just apply some pressure. And in there. surgeries, so it doesn't bother me too much. All right, I can go ahead and remove this cotton. And that's it. All right, and we're already reading, it's already read. It's a very quick and easy test. Um, during the wellness day as well, we can check uh, that blood pressure and also do a BMI assessment. And so it's nice, convenient. Um, and really quick too, so you wow, can get on with your really day. that was really simple so. and easy. So I also read that um, Walmart is now teaming up with the American Diabetes Association to um, help support people that might be at risk for type two diabetes. And tell us about that and why you're doing this. Definitely, so with our partnership with the American Diabetes Association, uh, our glucose screenings is designed to identify patients who may have elevated blood sugars. And so as part of our screening and consent forms, um, we do ask for permission to uh, share information with the American Diabetes Association uh, where there may be some continued outreach. Um, okay. You know, as they say, uh, an, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so if we can identify individuals that are at risk for diabetes being in the pre-diabetic state, or if their levels may indicate diabetes, um, getting connected to care and, and getting that uh, treatment initiated quickly and in a quality manner is really important and so when you have the credibility of an organization like the American Diabetes Association with another reputable organization such as Walmart um, you know when we have that partnership that can be really powerful for a patient to have that access with the educational materials that the American key, Diabetes yeah, Association that access can provide. And getting that recognizing it quickly and making sure that they get the treatment. Correct. So, and then also you mentioned at the top about immunizations. Can you tell us about what are some of the immunizations, the types that you do, who should get them, that type of thing? Yeah, so it's really exciting. Walmart's been delivering immunizations in the community setting for a number of years now. And so we do anything from a flu shot all the way up to the new shingles vaccination. Um, if a patient were, were to be interested in immunization, you know, oftentimes it's something, I don't know what I need. Um, all all of our Walmart pharmacies have access to Minnesota uh, State Registry where all immunization data is reported mm -hmm. and we can do a free immunization screening as well. There could be immunizations due based off of your age, um, different conditions such as diabetes. There's several vaccinations that are required for patients with diet, living with diabetes and so we can really let you know what you need. And the nice thing too uh, is that we can actually give you some upfront pricing. Uh, if you have insurance, uh, we can get, tell you what you would pay upfront, uh, mm -hmm. knowing what that copay would be. And so we offer that full line of immunizations, like I said, pneumonia. Uh, new shingles vaccine, tetanus shot. I know you talked to Dr. Jones earlier, those injuries and puncture yes. and cut wounds. Um, tetanus shot is just every 10 years that's that's required. And so I'm probably about ready to get one actually. Now ensuring, that, that, yeah. uh, ensuring that you're up to date. You don't remember what happened a decade it's been ago. 15 years since I got one of those. So we yeah. can definitely make sure that you're up to date. And whether you get it at our pharmacy or at the doctor's office, that's really not the important thing. It's that you get those immunizations done. And it's open to anyone. I mean, they're now recommending flu shots for children as well. Correct. So uh, patients of all ages are recommended to get vaccines. At our Walmart pharmacies, we're able to immunize with our protocol uh, 19 years and above. Uh, but and we can definitely do those screenings uh, for any individual. And you can do this any time of the year. Uh, we, I know we often recommend the, the flu shots 
in the fall, early fall, and that's so you're protected throughout the whole winter. But what about some of the other immunizations? Yeah, Just so anytime? year round, right? So summertime, we really like to promote and focus on the tetanus shot. Um, pneumonia is such a critical vaccine too. Uh, over the years, we've seen you know important people such as Jim Henson, Muhammad Ali, Merle Haggard um, passed away from pneumonia. And so if we can prevent this up front, yeah. and there's really now two pneumonia vaccines that are recommended for our patients that are over 65. And so helping to reconcile that, that's what our pharmacists are here for, is to help uh, kind of help you get the right vaccine and, and get you when you need it. Yeah, and make sure that you do it early because I just remember this earlier last winter, how a number of people hadn't gotten their flu shots and, and there was a lot of cases of flu, serious ones here in the in Minnesota and around the country. Exactly. So it's really important to, um, in like we say, we're about a month away from our flu vaccines getting into the store. That's hard so to believe. You don't <laughs> want to like think so about the end started. of summer, but it, it's right around the corner here. So, you know, going into your pharmacist and, and having that discussion, when should I get my flu shot? Um, where can I get that flu shot? Um, there's several different types of vaccines, whether it's a three strain, a four strain, a uh, high dose for a senior. Uh, we can help to kind of point you in the right direction. And, and give a good recommendation for the right vaccine for the right patient. Anything else our viewers should know about the Walmart pharmacies and about your health and wellness and yeah. about your screenings? And yeah, so our, our again, for the wellness day that's coming up in a couple weeks here on July 21st from 10 to 2, um, it, we're really focusing too on back to school. And so uh, whether you're uh, uh, oldest is heading off to college, your first one is heading off to college, making sure that they're up to date on all their vaccines, doing a vaccine screening, um, or uh, whether you're that patient who might be experiencing some different symptoms and, and maybe need a, a jump start to, to go in to, to see your doctor. A wellness day is a great starting point for you to stop in free of charge, uh, no strings attached. You just come in, get your screening done. And uh, the other big thing that we're really uh, happy about this year um, is our is our specialty pharmacy. Um, we have a facility down in Orlando um, that can fill a wider range of specialty medications, which can sometimes be hard to come by. And so no it, connecting those patients, so whether it's disease states like rheumatoid arthritis, HIV, transplants, uh, we can even serve those patients in our pharmacies in, in most places too. So you can come in, still meet, and meet with your routine pharmacist to you know, have that discussion about specialty medications with your pharmacist. We're happy to have those discussions as well. If someone has some more questions, is there a place that they should go to? Website, phone number? Yeah, so we have our walmart.com slash pharmacy. Um, awesome, awesome resources there, whether it be immunizations, um, ways that you can help to manage your medications in a convenient manner. Uh, we pretty much all have smartphones these days, so um, going into your pharmacy if you need help um, getting your walmart.com pharmacy account set up is a wealth of resources. Otherwise, like I said, we have 4,600 stores here in the U.S., 18,000 strong pharmacists in the in the area. Walk in, introduce yourself. Our pharmacists are open, accessible. Pharmacists um, like you. Exactly. So <laughs> we're, we're here for you. We want to have that discussion, um, whether it's anything from which over-the-counter product do I need or I have a, a question on one of my prescription medications. Whether you're our patients or not, we're more than happy to help have that discussion with you. Well, Vince Murphy with Walmart Pharmacies, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Great information. Thank you. And we'd like to thank you for joining us. We hope you join us next time on Inside Healthcare. See you then, everyone.